So this might actually be the highest protein, best fat loss food that's at Walmart. It is such a good deal and seriously just makes everything perfect. The trick behind fat loss foods is not finding a magical food that helps you burn fat. That doesn't exist. It's all about satiety. And what that means is foods that keep you full. If you were full, dieting would never have to be a thing. If you were always satiated and you didn't feel like you needed a bunch of food all the time, think about it. You wouldn't have to consciously think about fat loss foods or dieting. So the idea here is high protein, high fiber, and we're gonna find the foods that truly do keep you satisfied so that you can get in the best possible shape of your life. People think fruit and they think sugar, and that's not incorrect, okay? But different fruits have different types of sugar in them. Some fruits have high amounts of glucose, which will spike your insulin really high and crash you, leaving you feeling super hungry. And some fruits are higher fructose, which the jury is still out if fructose is really, really bad long-term and high amounts, but we're not talking ridiculous high fructose corn syrup amounts. We're talking good, moderate amounts of fructose. So what we wanna do is we wanna look at fruits that are higher in fructose, but we also wanna look at fruits that digest slowly. So check this out. Fresh blueberries, okay, $2.88. Pretty darn good price. You know, I recommend going organic or wild blueberries when you can, but let's be real here. If you're looking for a sweet snack, this is something that's gonna keep you full and it's gonna make your brain feel sharp. Okay, the reason I say that, it's got anthocyanins in it, which are demonstrated in multiple studies to be great for the brain. You ever notice like when you have caffeine and your brain feels good, you don't necessarily feel like wolfing down a bunch of food? If your brain feels foggy, you feel like grazing all the time. It's pretty clear. So when you eat things like this and you feel good mentally, you feel like on top of your game and you feel like you can make better decisions. So I consider blueberries one of my top fat loss foods, not to mention the calories are ridiculously low. One of my favorite things to put on top of a burger is mushrooms. Get practically no calories in them, but you're thinking like, okay, I thought you weren't gonna give us any weird kind of magical fat loss foods, and it's not. Okay, but the fiber content that is in mushrooms, if you have mushrooms on a burger, have you ever noticed that you fill up quickly. I want you to think back about times where you've had like mushrooms on top of a burger. You do get full quicker. Okay, beta glucans that are in mushrooms take a long time to digest. So once they hit your gut, the series of gut peptides that are released trigger a lot of digestion. And this kind of creates more of a demand on digestion. So on one hand, it's not something you want to eat before like you're going to go work out because you might feel a little bogged down for a minute. But as far as satiety goes, mushrooms are great for that. Not to mention tremendous for the gut microbiome. So I consider them a high fiber fat loss food just because look at how much bulk is here. And there's like practically no weight. It just fills your stomach right up. The meat department probably where I live the most, okay? I mean, I'm gonna be real here. Now, when it comes down to metabolic issues, when it comes down to insulin resistance, yeah, protein's gonna be king, but it's also king when it comes down to fat loss. What's really interesting with protein is that when you consume protein, it is between a 20 and 35% increase in the thermic effect, which means if you were to compare eating four ounces of meat to four ounces of starchy carbs or something, you're gonna burn 20 to 35% more energy digesting and utilizing the protein. Not to mention the protein's gonna control the glucose better, not to mention the protein's gonna keep you full longer because it takes longer to digest. I could go on and on and on and on. And if you're in a caloric deficit, you're trying to lose weight, as long as you keep protein high, I promise you, you're not gonna lose muscle. That is the key. So then it comes down to, well, what protein do we get? Okay. It's not all created equal because higher fat proteins are going to add up in calories very fast. And that's pretty simply put, but we can make some good decisions here. Now, what I like to do, especially if I'm on a budget, I don't pay close attention to the type of meat I'm getting as much. But I do notice that we're starting to see more and more like grass fed, grass finished type beef here. And even at, this is what's really cool, okay? This is pretty, looks at first like it's pricey, $19.32. But no, this is organic grass-fed beef, okay? Never any added hormones, any added antibiotics. And it's three one-pound packages. That's a really good price for 93% lean. Now, you might notice a significant difference between the taste of a 93% lean and 85% lean. But when you look at the calorie content, check this out. You got 180 calories, there's a 240 calories in an eight ounce serving or a four ounce serving, excuse me, you're probably more likely to have an eight ounce serving. So in this way, you're talking 120 less calories in a serving of the low fat, 93%. So this is a huge fat loss item for me. And look at, I have my favorite mushroom burger right there. So if you're on a budget, you wanna go for the ground meats. It's just gonna be easier that way. Uh, you know, you're not having to 
worry about choice cuts and things like that. And I recommend that the ground is kind of nice because you get a little bit of all of it. We live in a society where we choose these choice cuts and although choice cuts are great for taste, think about it, it's not reality. We didn't always just eat the perfect prime cut. We ate everything that was available. We ate cartilage, we ate all the stuff that may not sound super exciting. Okay, we would even eat the organ meat. So let's take a look at some of this stuff. I'm a big fan of pork. It's the forgotten thing, right? Look at this, $5.68 a pound. We got a thin ribbon of fat that you can cut off right there if you want to keep calories lean. Also very high in monounsaturated fats. So when it comes down to the fatty acid profile, I love the fatty acid profile of pork. So for $6, I get this, and it, look at this. We have four ounces, 150 calories. Compare that to the beef, which was 180. Okay, zero carbs, obviously, 23 grams of protein in four ounces. If you're having an eight ounce serving of that, man, we're talking close to 50 grams of protein. Okay, so this is great stuff. Now, we've got all kinds of different options here, but this I find to be the leanest. Um, now you could also do like thicker pork chops, things like that. I like the thin chops because I can just like cook one up, put it on, you know, a little bit of like a vegetable or anything like that, take it with me, put it on some low carb bread, perfect, easy peasy. Now, the other thing is, if you're going for like turkey, I don't see, oh, they do see ground chicken. The hard part is a lot of times with the ground chicken, ooh, this is great, check this out. So we've got ground chicken, but it's 96% lean ground chicken. A lot of times when you find ground chicken, it's chicken thigh and things like that. This might be chicken thigh too, and they do add natural flavors. That's a bit of a bummer, okay? But I still consider this $5.54 for a full pound. That's a tremendous price. You could divide this into probably three little burgers, and you're on a budget, and you have a protein that's gonna keep you super satiated without a copious amount of fat. People think, well, fats, they keep me satiated, right? I should eat things like nuts. They're gonna keep me full. That is somewhat correct, okay, because fats take a while to break down, okay? It elevates cholecystokinin, all these kinds of things. But unless you are doing a low-carb diet, I don't recommend you skyrocket your fat intake because the caloric density is so high. It's a common mistake people make. I'm gonna increase fats to keep me full. Well, you have more than double the amount of calories per gram of fat than you do gram of carbohydrates or protein. I don't recommend you indulge in a ton of carbs, so in that case, indulge in a bunch of protein, right? So keep your protein leaner. It's just a better choice. Now, if you're really, truly on a fat loss budget or really trying to drop some weight and pay attention to things, the frozen section is a perfectly, perfectly viable option for you. People rain on the frozen parade all the time. As a matter of fact, I think it's one of the best cost-effective ways to get good quality meat if you're not really worried about it being immediately fresh. Now, it all depends on how you thaw it out, right? Like if you thaw it out and you cook it from frozen and it tastes totally fine. It's all about knowing how to do it. So some really good options here. Some of the frozen ones I recommend, uh, where's the Ginio? Yeah, like the Ginio, these turkey burgers are great. Okay, 65% less fat. So we're already talking like a pretty low fat option. 15 grams of fat in one patty. That's actually more fat than you find in the beef. So even though they consider you know, turkey to be a lower fat option, you know, it's, it's not that that great. It's just what we're looking at here is the lower saturated fat option, which really doesn't apply here. But what I like, white turkey, rosemary extract, salt, and seasoning. That's it. Pretty simple, straightforward, right? Now, when it comes down to frozen meats, I did pop a link down below for ButcherBox. I think that's a really cost-effective way for people to get good quality grass-fed, grass-finished beef delivered to their doorstep. But also, they have poultry options, they have seafood options, they have scallops, they have cod, they have all kinds of really good things and really, really, really good prices. So a lot of times if going to the grocery store ends up being a pain for your time, and then of course, you never know what the prices are gonna be, you never know what they have in stock, definitely recommend ButcherBox. So you go online, you choose your cuts, and the link down below will actually show you my specific cuts, like what I get in my box monthly as well. And then that way you can get it popped in the mail, it gets delivered to your doorstep, boom, you're done. You've got your grass-fed, grass-finished meat for the month. Super easy, definitely recommend it. So that link's down below. Should save you some good money, definitely will save you some time. What do we got down here? Here's kind of the gluten-free option. I, I want you to be, use caution with a lot of these gluten-free items because a lot of times, just because they're gluten-free doesn't mean they're healthy. They still have a lot of interesting things in them. They're just usually made with rice flour instead of like traditional kind of uh, wheat flour. That's really the only main difference. Now, there are some things that might be helpful. Uh, again, we have to look at the fat content and things like that. Like a lot of times if you go for keto style options, if you're blending keto and not keto, you're gonna get all the bad side of keto, the high fat, high calorie side, with the high sugar side of your regular diet. So you, don't, you wanna pick one and stay in that lane. I don't really see anything here that jumps out at me as delicious or great. Well, take that back, a lot of things delicious, but 
And then we've got the berries here. Oh, here's great. Okay, so here's a perfect example. So like these wild blueberries, they're a little bit more expensive for this giant three pound bag, but that's still a really good price. Okay, and twice the antioxidant activity compared to normal blueberries. That is not inaccurate. Okay, the wild blueberries, we gotta remember with regular blueberries, I don't know what to say about GMO and genetically modified stuff, but what we do know is that they're definitely modifying them to taste better and probably have more sugar. So when we look at the data on berries, we have to think, okay, how can we be as close to the earth as possible? I recommend those wild blueberries and they're frozen immediately upon harvesting, so it makes it perfect. Okay, let's take a look at some breakfast options here for some like higher protein things. Okay, remember, we're looking for high protein, high fiber, moderate fat. So I see some of these turkey sausages. Three links is only five grams of fat and 11 grams of protein. And these are these Applegate farms. So they really, wow, I couldn't even find the ingredients because it's so minimal. Turkey, water, and then we have a little bit of cane sugar, salt, spices, rosemary extract. One gram of carbohydrate for three links. So much that sugar's not even adding into there. Uh, we can probably find one that doesn't have the sugar though because this is savory turkey. Let's see what chicken and say, oh, here we go. Look at this. A perfect no sugar item, no sugar option. 110 calories for three links. It is a little bit more fat, but there's no carbs, no sugar added. In this case, chicken, water, sea salt, spices, change. So what do we go here? What do we do with here? Well, in my humble opinion, I will probably take the one gram of sugar for the markedly less calories. So there's no sugar chicken and herb would be great if you were doing keto or something, but let's look at uh, chicken and sage here. That's 110. What was savory turkey? Honestly, savory turkey was like 90, right? Yeah, 90. So I always do this. And as a general rule of thumb, and I talked about this in a previous Costco video, you always wanna look at the ratio of protein to calories. The savory turkey, even though it has one gram of carbohydrate, it has 11 grams of protein for every 90 calories. This has 10 grams of protein for every 110 calories. So that protein to calorie ratio is my main thing I look at. Now, if I'm looking at fiber, that's a different situation. There's obviously not fiber in meat. So let's go with these savory turkey. That's a great little breakfast item. And it's not a terrible price, you know, four something bucks. I mean, it's not cheap, but it's not terrible. I also love these Siete tortillas. They're just caloric. They're, they're high calorie because they're made with almond flour instead of like regular flour. This may not be the best thing if you're trying to count your calories, but tremendous if you're trying to just get a more wholesome tortilla. Some of the things that make people really hungry, you don't think of them as like these big caloric monsters, but a lot of times these sauces that are loaded with sugar, they leave you wanting more. So you load the stuff on your food and you maybe only added 30 calories, but a half an hour, 60 minutes later, you wanna wolf down some more food because the sugar in them spiked you up and dropped you down. So I really, I, we could go off on a tangent, but trying to go for sugar-free options with your sauces, even, even if there's small amounts of like maybe aspartame, maybe sucralose, maybe stevia, maybe monk fruit, I would say, you know, if I had to have a tiny bit of aspartame or a tiny bit of sucralose, but it meant that I lost 100 pounds, I would go for that. I would lose the 100 pounds, right? Oh, when you're shopping for sauces, this is really big because you want to get ones that are going to be like this Rouse. Love this. I picked some up at Costco too. It's got whole peeled tomatoes and it's got olive oil. It's not using soybean oil. Now, relatively low calorie too. So try to opt for stuff like that. And that's just something that I think it's going to make you feel better. Plus there's interesting benefits with olive oil as far as thermogenesis and how it affects uh, what's called brown fat within your body. Aha, they found this. I found this. Okay, let's say you're a big pasta guy or gal, right? And you want to have some, just, you want that oomph of your pasta, but you don't want the typical rice pasta, you don't want the typical wheat pasta, uh, and you want that fiber. Remember how I mentioned the best ways to keep you satiated and keep you satisfied so that you're not wanting to eat more is to keep your protein high and your fiber high. It's that simple, and I know it's cliche, but people underestimate it. Chickpeas are very interesting, okay? the fiber content is pretty darn high. Five grams of fiber for every 35 grams of carbs. Okay, but we're also talking a relatively low glycemic carbohydrate made from chickpeas. So this is really, really good. Can control blood sugar a little bit more, but chickpeas upset some people's stomach. So even Barilla started making a lentil pasta. This is just one ingredient, red lentil flour. And look at this, six grams of uh, fiber for every 34 grams of carbs, okay? And it's got a good amount of soluble fiber, which is tremendous for your gut microbiome. 
But then we get even better. We just get, check this out. This is cauliflower. This is lentil pea and cauliflower. Now it's a little bit lower in the fiber, but I love that they actually add the cauliflower into it. This particular one is different. There's another brand that actually puts like the cauliflower on the top. That's the first ingredient. So out of all of these, bang for the buck, the red lentil pasta. I mean, that's just 292 for something that's gonna get you a high amount of fiber, keep you satiated, and it's gonna be a lower glycemic carb than say going for something like this, which has, let's see, two grams of fiber, 40 grams of carbs. Here's a great little hack, okay? Sweet potatoes are very, very satiating. And now we're starting to get to this. I just found this, uh, okay, we've got 60% lower carbs than rice. For $3, we get 110 calories, 23 grams of carbs, five of which is fiber. All it has is sweet potato calcium chloride, which is a firming agent. It's pretty much a preservative, but I mean, it beats having to like go cut up a bunch of fresh uh, sweet potatoes all the time. So this is something that you could totally just add into your mix. It's an easy, easy thing when you're on the go. And this is already pretty much cooked, so you don't need to go out and microwave it. It's ready to eat, you can eat it cold. So when you're on the go, think about it like this. It's pretty much impossible to find like a healthy carb on the go. It's easy to find fruit some places, and it's easy to find maybe french fries or something like that, but you're not gonna find a sweet potato vending machine at the airport. So having something like that on hand so that you can get your fiber in, get your good carbohydrates in without going down the wrong road, that's exactly what we're looking for. So let's keep looking to see what we can find in kind of the prepared stuff, or excuse me, the cans. We've got, I'm a big fan of canned veggies actually. It's not, not a bad option if you're on a budget. The canned asparagus is usually good. Mm, I don't see any right now. Sometimes we have to go back to basics, okay? We think tuna on a diet is just like so old school, but it's one of the leanest, lowest fat, highest protein options that you can get. And you don't have to opt for stuff that's questionable, okay? Like the star kiss, stuff like that. Yeah, we don't really know how sustainable is it, how ethical is it? But then we have uh, brands like this that are definitely pricier. We have like tuna fillets with oregano. This Tonino brand is great. It's just six fifty for, you know, well, that's, that's a lot, right? But you can get it in a canned form, which is still the same high quality. Uh, but this is gonna still be in olive oil, which is exactly what we're looking for if you're trying to get good fats in. But Tonino is a really good brand. So even though you pay a little bit more, okay, this is gonna be yellowfin tuna. You're gonna pay, what, maybe, a dollar or something. You're gonna pay a dollar more basically to get a good quality one. So also this albacore right here, four dollars a can, but really good quality stuff. Look, once again, how much fat is in this? Three grams of fat, 21 grams of protein over three grams of fat, 21 grams of protein for 110 calories. So it's that protein to calorie ratio. That's such a good ratio. And if you want to be on the go a little bit more, you've got the packets, you've got things like that. And no matter what, I mean, depending, this is like if you're really being careful with the quality, the thing that I like about the Safe Catch brand is every tuna is mercury tested. That is really important. Okay, we get into a world now where, like, we do need to be cognizant of this stuff, although some of the evidence is suggesting that tuna also contains so much selenium that it counteracts the effects of the mercury. So it begs the question if we actually need to be concerned about the mercury thing in the first place. Mercury, obviously a problem, but isn't a problem in tuna when we have enough selenium to potentially offset it. Uh, sardines, also higher protein, relatively low fat in the grand scheme of things. Eight grams of fat for a container. Uh, but we look at this, 18 grams of protein for 140 calories. Good ratio, right? Remember that ratio, that's our important thing here. And I love that Walmart is actually having good options here now. It used to just be total garbage. It used to just be total the mainstream Bumblebee, Starkist stuff, but now we're actually getting more broad. My personal favorite is Wild Planet, but not gonna lie, in a retail setting, it's pretty pricey. $4.12 for a can of albacore when I can go over here and get Tonino for $2.19. You know what's kind of funny? If we look at this, a lot of times we think, okay, well, wild-caught salmon is hard to get. Wild-caught salmon is expensive. But wild uh, salmon in a pouch or in a can is actually quite cheap. $2.50 for legit, sustainably caught wild Pacific pink salmon. Okay, so this is, look at this, 21 grams for 120 calories. That's a hell of a ratio. I'm gonna grab one of these because this stuff is delicious. That sounds disgusting. Um, here's a fun fact, okay. You're not gonna avoid oils, you're not gonna avoid fats. Just because I'm suggesting you go higher protein, higher fiber, doesn't mean I suggest you avoid fats. But I do want you to make con conscious decisions. Okay, olive oil, I think is going to be the best. Olive oil, avocado oil. 
Here's an interesting thing though. There was a relatively new study that took a look at coconut MCT oil. Okay, they found that subjects that had a little bit of MCT oil an hour before their lunch consumed insanely less with their lunch. So they consumed a lot less food. They had a tablespoon of coconut oil versus a different kind of oil. So corn oil versus uh, coconut oil, or in this case, MCT. Pretty phenomenal difference between the corn oil and the MCT. And what that demonstrates is that somehow we're having a satiating effect of the coconut oil but more so it has the ability to cross through the blood brain barrier a little bit better. So perhaps it's doing something with our brain and impacting our neurology so we're not as hungry. Very interesting little hack there. Now it's something that you could just have a tablespoon an hour before and suddenly you're like, I'm not as hungry as I was before. But otherwise I really recommend going for like the olive oils and the avocado oils. Okay, let's say you wanna have some pancakes or something. Now we have the paleo grain free and we have the keto carb friendly. Okay. Now the difference here is what's interesting. Normally you would expect keto to be higher calorie. In this case, the paleo is actually higher calorie. When we look at the fiber content, we have nine grams of fiber, eight grams of fat. Here we have three grams of fiber, six grams of fat. Okay, so the calories are coming here from a little bit more carbohydrates and maybe some erroneous things that are going on there. Not really sure where the discrepancy is on the calories uh, particularly, but what I like about this, I like this one more because it has cassava starch, but I like this one more because even though the fat content is a smidge higher, the fiber content is so much higher. So I think this, you know, A, little bit of fat that you consume is going to like be offset by the fiber. And B, I think the fact that you have such a nice amount of protein in here, six grams versus five grams, you're gonna put yourself in a great spot to be satiated too. So yes, a little bit more fat, but way, way better when it comes down to the fiber profile. I think you'll find yourself much more satiated. So you don't have to be doing keto. That's the thing. It's like people think, oh, this isn't gonna work for me because I'm not doing keto. No, it just means it's low carb. But in this case, the fiber content's so high. It's what we're looking for. So that's terrific. 19 grams of carbs, nine of which are fiber. Okay, so this is an interesting world here. Nutritional yeast. You might think, like, how is this gonna help me? Two ways. Okay, for one, one of the richest natural sources outside of like liver and spleen of vitamin b12 okay in a plant-based form it's very 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 solid for that what this can do is it ends up helping out with red blood cell formation which helps with better oxygenation this is going to help you feel more energetic it's going to help you feel better in the gym all of which has a trickle down effect in how you eat so really really cool stuff but the other piece is that if you use this in place of cheese let's say you're really just trying to drop fat you're trying to reduce your fat intake a little bit you're trying to increase your protein not only is this rich in protein with five grams and two tablespoons which is kind of interesting for just a like a, a yeast right you're also going to get a cheesy like taste that's going to really replace cheese so terrific stuff there whoa and as i'm talking this is something very interesting i'm gonna definitely get this i put it on asparagus i put it on mushrooms it tastes great on everything okay a little bit pricey here but this caught my eye what is paleo powder almond and flax it's like a breading wow that's cool almond meal flax seed himalayan pink salt uh salt chili powder great ingredients in this same one this one's just herb i think yeah this one's just a little more caloric but who knows why so flax is one of the best fibers that you can have. And even though it only shows one gram of fiber, that's for 17 servings, okay? You're probably gonna have more than a 1 17th of this when you're breading some chicken. You're probably gonna have more like, you know, five or six grams of fiber coming in your actual serving from this. So this is super cool. I wonder if my wife would totally dig this and make some cool stuff with it. So the flax seeds, uh, although they are something that people are gonna say are an estrogenic or a phytoestrogen food, What's interesting about flax is that it directly affects what's called the estrobilome. So it affects an area of your microbiome that helps you metabolize estrogens better. So if you're a male and you're trying to control your estrogen better, it might actually help you contrary to what some people say. Now, the other side is, it is one of the best bang for the buck fibers you can get. So even if the fiber content of flax is low, the power of it is immense, okay? It is a very powerful soluble fiber, very good. It kind of swells up, keeps you satiated. Oh, here's a pro tip. One of Thomas's major fat loss hacks. Have you ever noticed that when you eat chocolate, you feel good? Okay, well, there are what are called epicatechins in chocolate. Now, epicatechins can actually affect endorphins. They can actually affect your brain neurochemistry. So when you eat chocolate, you feel good. The problem is a lot of times chocolate comes at a cost, right? It comes with a bunch of sugar. I get unsweetened baking chocolate and I nibble on it a little bit. Just the regular unsweetened stuff, that's $2.46. Okay, I have a half an ounce of that or something like that. It keeps me just so calmly just good with what I consume. Like I just feel like I, I can just feel better and don't need to just graze on stuff the rest of the day. There's also very interesting stuff coming out surrounding chocolate 
and how it impacts insulin resistance, even when there is small amounts of sugar in it. So that is really cool. We're finding that the flavanol, the flavanols, excuse me, have a powerful effect on our insulin. Oh yeah. Kimchi. Okay, this is one of my ultimate fat loss foods. And this Cleveland brand makes some really good stuff. They make sauerkraut, they make uh, beet red kraut, which is really cool. The reason I'm gonna opt for the kimchi, here's the thing with kimchi, the evidence supports kimchi much better in the scientific research for gut health than sauerkraut. Sauerkraut actually doesn't seem to have a huge probiotic effect. It just kind of seems net neutral. Whereas kimchi, because you have the garlic and you have these other prebiotic fibers in it, ends up being great. Okay, now this usually, yeah, they add a little bit of sugar for the fermentation, so I wouldn't really worry about it because the calories are so low. So again, if I were to take a burger, put some mushrooms, put some kimchi on it, a mushroom kimchi burger, we're talking like heaven on earth. Now we got the world of deli meats, which can be a dubious, nefarious little world, okay? So nine out of 10 of these items are gonna be sketchy. Sodium phosphates, sodium nitrates, sodium nitrates, uh, sodium erythabates, all kinds of calcium caseinates, just stuff that we just don't really want. Okay, even some of these like natural choice, I'm gonna just go out on a limb and assume they have, it's actually not as bad as I thought, water, honey, salt. Actually, that's actually surprisingly good. Uh, but one of the best ways to just get protein sky high in a very inexpensive, convenient way. Uh, I love Applegate Farms, it just gets expensive. Like here's the ham, uh, look at this protein, 12 grams of protein per 70 calories. We have pork, pork broth, a little bit of sugar because it's the, uh, the honey ham kind. But let's see if we can find something that's like a really good one. Okay, here's natural choice, deli turkey. What's in this? Turkey breast meat, ah, potato starch. That's exactly what we gotta watch out for. Why are we adding potato starch into this? Plus sugar, rice starch, carrageenan, yeah. So it's like funny because like the smoke, the deli ham was fine, right? But then we go to turkey, not so good. So I don't know if I see any deli meats that I'm jumping for joy about. Because huh, this is a bummer because you can really find some good stuff. Sometimes they'll have them in different areas. And I, I will tell you, like Costco has one that's great that doesn't have anything else added to it. Uh, it looks like we're out of luck for Walmart deli meat. Let's see what else is down here. Let's see. Oh, this is cool. So this Tillamook has 14 grams of protein for 70 calories. Tremendous ratio there and they're using gluten-free soy sauce. Okay, so don't be afraid by the soybeans. Like that's not the end of the world. It's just what soy sauce is. Uh, beef broth does say flavoring, so it probably has some weird stuff in there. Uh, let's see if, that's the jerky. What about the sticks? Uh, beef and pork, pork broth, salt, cultured celery powder, some flavorings, some caraway seed. Oh, much higher fat. So in this case, Again, I'm not against fat, but we look at the nine grams of protein for 120 calories compared to 13 grams of protein over 90 calories. It's just a better bang for the buck. All those little things add up. I don't know if they have a lot of other options here. Everything else looks like it's kind of the low quality stuff. So yeah, that Tillamook looks pretty good. I love the world of nuts, but we run into an issue here. Again, we talk about like people wanting to munch on uh, fats to keep them satiated, but it ends up being a problem because these nuts are so caloric, it's so easy to overdo them. And although I don't like individual packaging like this, I think this is one of the best ways to keep you honest. So I don't like all the packaging. I don't like the crap that's in it a lot of times, but at least for being able to keep you honest and not just like having this massive handful, something like this might not be a bad route to go. Uh, I don't see individual packs of like macadamia nuts. Let's see. Oh, here's pumpkin seeds. Love pumpkin seeds. Try to get them sprouted whenever you can. But again, you're just, the fiber ratio is just not, it, you might get like one or two grams of fiber in like a small handful of nuts. You know, you're looking at like 200 calories and maybe you'll get four grams of fiber. It's just, I love nuts, but it's just, you got to put your protein first. Eat your protein first, and then if you have room left over, maybe have a little bit of nuts. All right, I just touched on this stuff at, uh, at Costco. So it's Oikos Triple Zero. It's pretty cool. Okay, 17 grams of protein, zero grams of fat, 17 grams of protein for 100 calories. Okay, non-fat milk, 
some natural flavors, which again, could be hit and miss, I don't know, depends on the brand, but it's sweetened with stevia. Tapioca starch, I don't mind. The reason they add the tapioca starch, they actually make it thicker. So tapioca, you're gonna find everywhere. I'm not worried about it. The tapioca starch is not like a corn starch. It's made from tapioca, so it's derived from cassava, which is high fiber, kind of gets gelatinous a little bit with tapioca, it gels up. So that's what makes this thick and feel like it's a higher fat protein. Six bucks, or 5.24 for five servings of 17 grams. Okay, so we're talking, what, close to 100 grams of protein in this? Almost 100 grams of protein, 90? That's really cool. So if I ate half of this, I'd get 45 grams of protein, and I'd only have a couple hundred calories. So this might actually be the highest protein, best fat loss food that's at Walmart. It is such a good deal, and seriously just makes everything perfect. So additionally, wow, they've got this, which is one that doesn't have this is only seven grams of carbs, 18 grams for 100 calories. Pretty young, similar. Yeah, same exact ratio, but without the flavoring. So if you wanted to sweeten it up yourself. Now this one, I don't know. Let's see, this one they fortify with more protein. Non-fat milk, oh, whey protein concentrate and some, they add some cream. I don't like the concentrate. I prefer like more of a whey protein isolate because it all depends. But they also add some additional cultures there. 25 grams of protein. I don't like the fat. I'm gonna try this, okay. Again, whey protein concentrate is, it could be iffy, right? I prefer the isolate, which is the protein isolated from the whey, whereas the concentrate has a lot of the milk solids too. Uh, I like yogurt because it breaks down the lactose a little bit more. You don't get as much of the negative attribute of dairy. I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna try it. If I end up uh, seat belted to the toilet, I'll let you know. Otherwise, I love my traditional faya. I'm a big, I'm a big yogurt guy, in case you haven't noticed. Like, I consume quite a bit of yogurt. I don't consume a ton of dairy, but I consume a bunch of yogurt. Uh, this one's really good too. And lower carb option with a little bit of fat. So in this case, it's low fat milk, tapioca starch again, natural flavors, lemon juice. Uh, once again, they are using, yep, stevia. So it's like, these are the two that fight, they compete, right? These two, uh, my kids actually prefer this one, whereas I prefer this one. Very, very similar. The difference is this one has a little bit of fat. This one is lower carb. So if you're doing a low carb diet, it's a better option. I'm gonna get one of each because my kids will eat it for sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we watch you. Oh, well. <laughs> Thank you. Can I take a picture with you? For sure. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, you bet. <laughs> oh, and this is kind of interesting here. So ratio came out with this, and I've talked about this. I just don't like the fact that like they they use avocado oil, which is great, but then they add a bunch of sucralose. I've talked about this in other videos all the time. It's just like you're defeating the purpose of yogurt. The questionable thing with sucralose is that it's questionable whether it impacts your gut microbiome. To what degree? Honestly, it's probably minimal, but it just doesn't make sense when you have cultures that are supposed to be good for your gut along with something that is questionable on your gut. How hard is it to use, even candidly, I'm gonna get hurt for saying this, but why don't even use aspartame? I mean, I don't like this stuff, but aspartame over sucralose, because at least aspartame doesn't have the gut microbiome prospective downfall. Um, I think we got this. What's this? Oh, this is in. Oh, they still have erythritol and sucralose. Never mind. That's interesting, though. And then they have the smaller versions of this stuff. You want to know what the best fat loss breakfast probably is? Steak and eggs. Now, what the heck? Doesn't that seem pretty caloric? Doesn't that seem like very high fat for everything that we're talking about? Yeah, it does. But here's the thing what do people usually combine with steak and eggs? Well, my videographer here combines them with pancakes, okay? That's about what 99% of people do. They have steak and eggs and they say, well, I'm gonna have pancakes. So he's fired, but either way, no. <laughs> but either way, the point is, is that it's not steak and eggs that are bad. It's the fact that they're generally combined with stuff that shouldn't be combined with them. Eggs are rich in monounsaturated fats. They'll keep you satisfied all day. High protein steak, that's gonna keep you satisfied too. Now. BMC Medical Genomics, we start the day with insulin resistant fat cells, insulin sensitive muscle cells, which means in human terms that you can get by with eating your fats in the morning. So allocate your fattier foods and lower carbs to the morning time and wean your fats off, excuse me, and wean your fats off as the day goes on. So just a pro tip, keep satisfied with the steak and eggs, feel like you're doing something kind of naughty, you don't know, feels good. We're gonna jump over to the supplement section really quick, not because I wanna get some supplements, but because I do wanna help you understand higher protein protein powders and maybe a couple bars that you can grab for when you're on the go. But first, I gotta grab my kids 
a toy because we do this thing called the Switch Witch. It's Halloween today when we're filming. Uh, this video is obviously releasing at a different time, but Halloween, we still want their kids to go trick or treating, but we obviously don't want them having a ton of candy. So if they get like 50 pieces of candy, they can trade in their candy and we trade in that candy with the Switch Witch who gives them a toy instead of that candy. Uh, we learned that when we lived in Texas. It's kind of a cool thing. And then we either, uh, a lot of times we just like ship the candy off to the troops or whatever, because that's typically what they like to do. But um, I'd rather do that than throw it away. I know it's still not good stuff either way. But I got to figure out something real quick. I like the little ones that you can like drive in the house and stuff still. I'll get them this. I'll pull them I think that's, yeah. that's totally, totally Emma. Perfect. Equal prices exactly to what they're getting. So, all right, as far as protein bang for the buck and lean, powerful protein, IsoPure here at Walmart, 15 servings, okay, zero grams of fat, 25 grams of protein for 100 calories. Definitely the best ratio I think we've seen today because uh, it can't get any better than that because there's nothing else in there to affect those macronutrients and that caloric density. The problem is they have sucralose in this, but it's whey protein isolate. They have a nice blend of magnesium, different minerals that are in there. It's really great. Like I really do like it. The downside is the sucralose and the artificial flavors. So here's your decision. Okay, you can go with one that has a little bit of sucralose and just see what happens. I think you're gonna be fine. I still use this from time to time. Uh, you could also go online. They have an unflavored, unsweetened one, which is everything you see here without the sweeteners, the flavors. Obviously, they don't sell that at Walmart because most people aren't going to buy that. Most people like are just looking for what tastes good. So I'll tell you, this stuff tastes delicious and it's definitely great. Uh, and it's a great way to increase your protein. If you wanted to add this to some of this and make a super protein mix, heck yeah, it's a perfect way. Uh, they also have some of these other ones. Uh, same kind of, oh, actually this is interesting. Whey protein isolate, natural flavors, citric acid, fruit and vegetable juice, and stevia. So here we have 20 grams of protein. Interesting. Yeah, 20 grams of protein for 90, 90 calories, 25 grams of protein for 100 calories. Um, definitely more expensive. How many servings we get here? 16 servings. So about the same amount of servings. It's kind of interesting. Now we don't know like what's going on here. Is it the, you know, we've got natural flavors that could be doing a number of things, but some good options here. This gold standard stuff is the whey protein isolate and concentrate. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend that unless, you know, you really want it. Uh, this is a good brand. I know this was at Costco for a long time, but it's the same kind of thing. Whey protein isolate blend, which is whey protein isolate and uh, native whey protein isolate and whey protein ice, I think that's weird. And a whey protein concentrate, natural flavors, but it is sweetened with stevia at least. So the caveat, we get whey protein isolate slash concentrate with stevia, or we get pure isolate with sucralose. So it definitely becomes, you know, a little bit of a, like, what do you want? Pick your poison really. Now, price-wise, 15 servings, it's actually better for the isopure. So at that rate, you know, in that case, might want to go for the isopure. Dimatize, let's see. Dimatize has some wacky, cool flavors, like really good stuff, but I know it's got some junk in it. Hydrolyzed whey protein isolate, spray dried coffee, caffeine, soy lecithin, sucralose, and stevia. That's kind of a bummer. Like you're using stevia, but you're also using sucralose. It's like just pick one. You're already, you've already done it. But good flavors, I will say this. Um, my father-in-law, who uh, he was trying to lose a lot of weight, he couldn't stand the taste of some of these, so he had tried this one, and was a big fan of it. But at the same time, you know, it's got a lot of garbage in it. Collagen is going to be something that you're not going to be getting the kind of protein you're looking for for uh, muscle building per se, but you're definitely going to at least get the satiety aspect of it. So you've got that benefit there. Uh, this one's great just because you have practically nothing in it. Okay, you've got collagen. That's it, right? So you have no fillers, nothing else added to it. So that makes it nice. Other than that, that's about it. When you start getting into the plant-based proteins here, you're getting into a lot of confusing garbage that's in them. So we're probably not going to focus on any of those. Interesting though. Okay, and then we have the world of bars. This is where it gets a little bit wonky. The selection here for bars at Walmart is not tremendous. I know that Quest just reformulated. I've had a number of their bars since they reformulated. Definitely don't send you on as much of a quest to the toilet as they used to, which I used to joke about. Um, out of all the ones here, I would probably say Quest bars make the most sense because most of them are super high calorie, super loaded with garbage, especially like these pure protein. But when you look at like the Quest bars, again, not perfect, 
definitely not perfect. You got protein blend, you got milk protein isolate, whey protein isolate, polydextrose, which is a prebiotic fiber, erythritol, you got palm kernel oil, natural flavors, all almonds, sodium caseinate. Um, I mean, just some weird stuff. This one has sucralose in it. Some of them don't. Like I think like the s'mores ones. Yeah, so you have to look carefully. Like this one, oh, this one does too at the bottom. That one does. What about their crispy ones? Yeah, see, even that has carrageenan in it. So again, like, are you trying to like watch everything you eat or are you trying to like reduce calories and pay attention there? It's, it's always a trade-off. You always have to pay attention here. Uh, I like this one because it does have allulose. These crispy ones use allulose as a sweetener, which is kind of cool, but they still have sucralose added to it. But you get less protein, 15, 18 grams, 15 grams. Whereas here you're getting like four grams of carbs and you're getting 21 grams of protein. Okay, so you're definitely higher protein on these traditional bars versus the crispy ones. And these cakes and cups and things like that, I wouldn't even bother with those. It's just lower protein content with a lot extra garbage. So Quest Bar will probably work there as far as what's available here. Uh, if you have to go for a bar, I really do. I mean, I like more of the ones that you can only get online. Otherwise, Costco's Kirkland bar is not bad. It's a better option than, say, those. <laughs> to your protection plan for the kimchi. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Simple, effective. I didn't buy a whole lot, but I was able to at least show you what works well. And hopefully, even if you don't grasp everything that I talked about in terms of the science, and even if you didn't get the pragmatic stuff you need to pick up at the store, maybe you learned some fundamentals on how to shop for fat loss foods. And at the end of the day, it really does come down to protein and fiber, but it comes down to satiety, impacting our brain so that we can make better decisions about our life and about our food. It's not about one hit magical foods. It's about really being smart and training your body to run on its own fuel sources as much as possible. I'll see you tomorrow.